Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that <clears throat> you can be young. Hell, you could be immature. You can be undisciplined. You can be a lot of these different things. But what you can't do is give the impression to your teammates that you ain't willing to accept accountability. Can't do that. He's he's done in New York. When uh, you're talking to a native, you're listening to a native New Yorker. When New Yorkers lose faith in you the way they lost faith in him, they booed him off the field. You know why they did that, Molly? Why? Ryan Clark, Tell playmaker. Me. Because they look at this Jets team as a playoff team. Yep. And the only thing that ruined it for them in their eyes is Zach Wilson. And you know something? They're right. Under pressure, he's going to get sacked. Second sack on him, and that's knocked down. So again, the pressure. Robertson Harris is there. Wilson fires low and complete. You got five seconds now. Corey Davis. Right. Wilson back to throw. Clock is at all zeros. And then he picked off. Not impatient. They've been impatient for years here. Well. Zach Wilson had another chance, and safe to say that it does not look good, and he kind of blew the chance with his performance on Thursday. This game really just cemented that the end is near for Zach Wilson and the Jets as a partnership, and as them even coexisting with each other at all, because at this point, it's just, it's not salvageable anymore, bro. It's like, it's terrible. You can literally cannot do anything about this anymore. Zach Wilson on Thursday literally looked like almost a deer in headlights and he looked like someone who had been given up to, abandoned, just lost in general. For the way he played, it was just so bad that literally every single thing that he did, the New York fans just booed him relentlessly. Even if it was an incomplete pass, a sack, uh, interception, anything, even just breathing, they just started booting him, bro. Even him walking on the field, they just started booing him. They didn't want him, and they never wanted him ever since that Mike White game against Chicago. It was just cemented that he is basically what everyone thought he was in the New York Jets' eyes as he's not that guy, and he will not be our guy, and we refuse to have him as our guy or even in New York at all. The worst part about this is that anyone who made excuses or said it wasn't his fault at this point it's you can't really defend him anymore like he played like he didn't want to be there and he played like it was truly the end of zach wilson as a jet like if i read you these stats right now you will be appalled of what he did on that football field now mind you zach wilson played so bad that he basically got benched in the third quarter so these stats are before he got benched in the third quarter which read 9 of 18, 92 yards, 5.1 average, 0 touchdowns, 1 interception, what I really can't fault him because it was like a hell mirror before halftime, 3 sacks, a QBR of 5.2, double yikes, and a QB rating of 41.9, triple name, triple yikes. Now, if I read you those stats and it was someone like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Tua Tagovailoa, or any other QB that you consider as a good, great, or franchise guy, you would literally be up in arms trying to kill him for the shitty performance that he put on right now. To make matters even worse, his backup, who I didn't even know existed, Chris Schreiber, I'm so sorry, I have no idea, but I seriously don't know who this man is, for he's the fourth string. Flacco's the third string. They didn't even put Flacco in the game. That's how bad it was. He got 10 for 15, 90 yards, 6 point average, 0 touchdowns, 0 interceptions, 0 sacks, a QBR of 72.1, and a QB passer rating of 82.6. And this is all him just playing one quarter of football. Zach Wilson played three quarters of football, and he almost got the same amount of yards that he got in one. This is astronomically bad, guys. This is terrible. What makes the situation even worse is that the Jets defense only gave up 19 points the whole game. That means they were still in the game from the first whistle to the last whistle. 
And the Jets' offense was so anemic, so trash, so bad, that they couldn't even score a touchdown. Their only three points came off a fumble from the Jags on their first drive, and that was all the scoring that they did the whole game. That was basically it. That is literally mind-boggling. That, if I'm a defense, I would be up in arms as I did my job. Now, why did y'all gain two goals? It was 16-3 in the third quarter. It was 16-3 until 3 minutes and 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter. They still had a chance this whole game until the fourth quarter where there's only about three minutes left to still have a chance and score. And I'll obviously nothing. That is hurtful. That's mind-boggling. That is literally disrespectful to your defense. And honestly, if I'm a person on defense, I would be mad. I would honestly be mad because what else can I do? Do I have to score a defensive touchdown? Like, those things come, they don't come easy. All you need to do is just believe in your offense, and now you can't even do that anymore. And now, I really don't know what the Jets do for the last two games with their slow tail folks. Because if you look at their schedule, they have the Seahawks and they have the Dolphins. Both of those games, I don't expect them to even win. I don't expect them to be competitive in because the Seahawks are a way better team with or without Tyler Lockett. I know he got hurt, but I still believe in the Seahawks. And the Dolphins have Tyree Kill. Raheem Mostert and Jalen Waddle. That's a whole track meet. I don't think that the Jets are going to do what they did before when they didn't have Tua. This just screams everything like sound the alarms. It's over. It's good season, y'all. GG's. Like, it's over, guys. It's just over for the Jets, folks. It's over for the Jets in general for this season. And now they have to really like think about what they're going to do about QB right now. If I'm Zach Wilson, I'm going to demand a trade before the New York Jets demand a trade. Because honestly, at this point, your confidence is shot. Like, no one believes me. I don't even think Zach Wilson believes in himself. That's how bad the Jets have messed him up. And he needs to get out of there and go to another team that can maybe develop him into something as maybe even a good QB, an average mid QB, a Jimmy G, a Jimmy Garoppolo. Because honestly, right now, he's looking like he's going to be the biggest bust in NFL history. No, not the biggest bust, but one of the biggest busts in NFL history. Because it's looking bad for the Jets. And I don't know where the Jets do after this, because no QB on your roster screams, yeah, we got this. Like, everyone screams, nah, what, it's over. And I don't know what they do, but they gotta figure it out quick. But that's just my two cents, man. What do I know? I'm just a fan. So, if you like this video, please like it up. If you want to share it, please share it. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. Hey, it's all on you, but I know that I am up.